Dal congresso dell'ASCO, l'American Society of Clinical Oncology a Chicago, arrivano notizie rilevanti per la cura del tumore del polmone non a piccole cellule avanzato, in particolare della forma cosiddetta ALK positiva, che presenta cioè alterazioni del gene ALK. Sono stati presentati infatti nuovi risultati a lungo termine, con un follow-up di ben 5 anni, di uno studio importante, lo studio Crown, in cui si è valutato l'orlatinib, un farmaco di nuova generazione frutto della ricerca Pfizer, in questo gruppo di pazienti. Noi ci facciamo raccontare più in dettaglio di che cosa si tratta, qual è l'importanza di questa novità e più in generale qual è l'impegno di Pfizer nell'oncologia toracica e non solo, dalla dottoressa Despina Tomaidu, Global Medical Director Precision Medicine di Pfizer. Uh, Dr. Tomaidu, first of all, what is the Crown Study whose updated results have just been presented at the 2024 ASCO Congress? So the CROWN study is a phase three global clinical trial uh, that has been uh, running for a few years that has been investigating the role of lorlatinib, a third generation ALK tyrosine kinase inhibitor that has been use, used for the treatment of ALK positive non-small cell lung cancers uh, patients versus crisotinib, the standard of care. And the trial was designed to demonstrate a significant advancement an uh, improvement in progression-free survival for patients. Uh, Dr. Tomadiu, which are the new results from the CROWN study reported now in Chicago? We're actually in Chicago in order to report the updated information from the CROWN study. These results will be based on the five-year follow-up of patients. And in, in uh, the results we will be presenting here, we are reporting that actually the median progression-free survival after five years has not been reached in patients treated with lolatinib. We actually have uh, more than 60% of patients are alive without evidence of progression after being followed up for five years in the treatment arm of lolatinib. All these patients are actually, they were treatment-naive patients, uh, and so they had not received any prior treatment for the advanced metastatic setting. And uh, is the, this result a major advance in comparison with crizotinib? So based on the five-year analysis, we have 60% of patients being alive without evidence of radiographic progression after five years with lolatinib versus 8% of patients with crizotinib. This represents a, a significant uh, improvement in outcomes for this, uh, these patients. And actually, the Uh, the fact that the PFS has not been reached at five years is the longest reported PFS, not only in the ALK positive lung, lung cancer space, but across lung cancer. Uh, why are these updated results so important? And what's the take home message from the CROM study? First of all, this is a very mature follow up. So we have been following up the patients for five years. And we've actively been assessing their tumor we, with tumor assessments, the patients every eight weeks. All patients, we're actually, all the patients were undergoing tumor assessments, including brain MRIs every eight weeks throughout the course of the studies. So these results are very important because we, we can demonstrate that the majority of the patients actually do not experience progression systemically, but also intercranially. So we have a 92% protection from progression in the brain for these patients. And this is particularly important for the ALK positive non-small cell lung cancer patients because we know that brain metastasis, it's, a, it's an area of concern for these patients. It's a very prevalent area of metastasis for ALK positive patients. So Lolatinib was able to demonstrate that after five years, and uh, 92% of patients were free of intracranial progression. Uh, besides the CROWN study, which is the commitment of Pfizer in uh, thoracic oncology? First of all, I wanted to highlight that Pfizer has a, a history and a legacy in lung cancer, and particularly the ALK positive non-small cell lung cancer, as Pfizer is the company that re revolutionized this space with the development of crizotinib uh, over a decade ago, which really was the first generation ALK inhibitor that brought hope and promise for patients with ALK-positive uh, uh, lung cancer. 
Uh, lorlatinib is a drug that was rationally designed in our laboratories with specific pharmacological properties to cross the blood-brain barrier and also overcome resistance mutations. And we see the results uh, of lorlatinib with the longer follow-up of the CRAM trial. Pfizer is the, uh, committed to developing innovative treatments for um, uh, for uh, patients with lung cancer. So in our portfolio, we have um, we are currently developing in late states uh, an ADC antibody drug conjugate, and we have multiple um, targeted agents that are in earlier development phases. And we are very much looking forward in progressing these agents uh, through clinical trials. In addition to thoracic oncology, is Pfizer interested in other areas of oncology, also taking into account the recent acquisition of CIGEN? So Pfizer has significantly expanded its uh, oncology organization through the acquisition of CIGEN. And we have been amplifying our efforts to accelerate scientific breakthroughs for people with cancer. Oncology is very well positioned to be a critical driver of potential long-term sustainable growth for Pfizer. Uh, and we have a very clear strategy uh, that is focusing on um, scientific modalities for the main types of cancer, where we have already deep expertise, such as thoracic oncology, the GU space, and others. And we also have the knowledge to advance our leadership. So we do have... Um, a very well diversified portfolio that includes numerous medicines that have become standards of care throughout the years. And we are planning to further expand this portfolio with our deep and diverse pipeline. We have more than 50 programs in development for multiple types of cancer.